Hi, my name is Sam, and today I'll be talking about how to use the renormalization group method for obtaining the critical exponents associated with site percolation. Recall that on a 2D square lattice, each square or site is occupied independently of its neighbors with probability p. A large group of occupied sites are connected via nearest neighbors is known as a cluster. A spanning cluster is a cluster that extends from one end of the lattice to the other. There exists a threshold or critical probability p sub c such that when p is less than p critical, no spanning cluster exists, and when p is greater than or equal to p critical, one spanning cluster exists. And if such a spanning cluster exists, we can say there has been a percolation transition. There are a few important quantities that characterize percolation, and the first of which is p infinity, which is a probability that an occupied site belongs to a spanning cluster. Since a spanning cluster is very unlikely to occur at low p, p infinity equals 0 when p is less than p critical. When p equals 1, every site is guaranteed to be occupied, so of course p infinity must also equal 1. So between p equals p critical and p equals 1, p infinity is increasing monotonically. The second important quantity is n sub s, which is the mean cluster size distribution, defined as the average number of clusters of size s over the total number of lattice sites. The similar quantity is capital S, the mean cluster size, um, and finally, the most important quantity of percolation is the connectedness length, zeta, which is a function of p. Formally, it's a characteristic linear dimension associated with the clusters, but basically it's a measure of how bunched up or spread out the clusters are. Now, most people are familiar with thermodynamic phase transitions. In percolation, a transition occurs between the state of having no spanning cluster to a single spanning cluster existing. The properties of this transition and percolation are qualitatively similar to the properties of thermodynamic phase transitions. We now observe how our important percolation quantities behave near the percolation threshold. For example, um, first look at zeta, the connectedness length. When p is less than p critical, zeta increases with p, but it decreases with p when p is greater than p critical. This makes sense because when p is less than p critical, the length of each cluster will continue to get larger and larger until a spanning cluster appears, after which the length of the finite clusters will continually decrease as more and more sites are combined with the large spanning cluster. For a finite lattice, zeta at p equals p critical is approximately l, the size of your lattice, so zeta diverges as l approaches infinity. Since we see that as p approaches p critical, zeta rapidly increases, we can conjecture that in the limit L approaches infinity, zeta grows rapidly in the critical region, p minus p critical is much less than 1, or where p is close to p critical. Thus, we can describe the divergence of zeta by introducing the critical exponent nu, such that zeta is proportional to p minus p critical all to the negative nu. Now let's look at p infinity in the critical region as L approaches infinity. We know that p infinity equals 0 when p is less than p critical, and it's an increasing function of p when p is greater than p critical. Thus, we can also conjecture that in the critical region, the increase of p infinity with p can be characterized by beta, where p infinity is proportional to p minus p critical all to the beta. These critical exponents can be obtained directly via the renormalization group method, which involves examining the physical quantities, such as p infinity and the connectedness length, at different length scales. First, imagine a picture of a percolation configuration run at p equals p0, which is less than p critical. If you zoom out or view a photo from a much further distance, adjacent occupied sites will appear as a single cluster, and single site clusters and thin connections between clusters will be lost from view. So the distant picture looks like a percolation lattice generated at p1, which is less than p0, and the connectedness length will also be smaller. If you continue to zoom out more and more, eventually the photo will look like the trivial fixed point p equals 0. The opposite happens if you start with a photo where p equals p0 greater than p critical. Small regions of unoccupied sites will vanish, and more and more of the lattice will appear occupied until you see the non-trivial fixed point p equals 0. The idea is, as you move further away, nearby occupied sites merge to create a new supersite or renormalized site. Thus, a zoomed out lattice will have about the same symmetry of the original lattice, but the length scale, or the distances, will be smaller by a factor of b. We have a vPython program that simulates the renormalization process. We took groups of sites and checked to see if there was a spanning cluster within it or not. We then replaced the group of sites with a single occupied site if there was a spanning cluster, and an unoccupied site if there was not. The effect of successive transformations of percolation configurations is to move the system away from p-critical. 
The system moves to p equals 0 when you start with p less than p critical, as shown here. Um, and in the case when you begin with p greater than p critical, the system moves to p equals 1. And then p critical itself is associated with the unstable fixed point of the renormalization transformation. While the visual implementation allows us to estimate p critical, it says nothing about the critical exponents. So instead, we use a mathematical version of the renormalization group method to obtain the exponents directly. We will look specifically at nu, the critical exponent associated with connectedness alike. The idea is the same as the visual representation. We replace the cell of the original lattice sites with a single new site that represents whether the original site spanned the cell. Now we want to add parameters to the renormalized configuration. As with the original lattice, we assume each cell is independent and characterized by probability p prime that the cell is occupied. If the original sites are occupied with probability p, then the cells are occupied with probability p prime, such that p prime equals r of p, where r is the total probability that the sites form a spanning path in the cell. To find the non-trivial fixed point associated with p critical, we want to find p star, where p star equals r of p star. We have now moved to calculate nu. Recall that the lengths are reduced on the renormalized lattice by a factor of b, so zeta prime equals zeta over b. Since zeta of p equals some constant times p minus p critical all to the negative nu, then when p is approximately p critical, then we can say zeta of p prime equals zeta prime of p, and we obtain the following relation, p prime minus p star all to the negative nu equals beta to the negative 1 times p minus p star to all to the negative nu, where p critical is identified with p star. So to find the relation between p prime and p near p critical, we want to expand p prime in a Taylor series about p star and obtain the first order in p minus p star as shown below. Since r of p equals p prime and r of p star equals p star, then the relation can be rewritten to obtain the final result the p prime minus p star equals lambda times p minus p prime, where lambda is the derivative of r of p star. From this relation and a previous relation, we find that in the end, b equals lambda to the nu, and so nu equals natural log of b over natural log of lambda, where again lambda is the derivative of r of p star and the other critical exponents can be found in a similar fashion.